The year is 1989, and the English band Godflesh have just released their debut album, Street Cleaner. Truly a classic, known for its bleak and dissonant atmosphere and its trademark drum machine. Hugely influential in the world of industrial metal and indeed on anyone with ears to hear it. Today, I'm going to show you everything I know about cleaning streets. So the first and most important part of this production is the Alesis HR16 drum machine, and I'll put a link in the description to where you can download those samples for free. The HR16 was an important drum machine for its affordability and its easy programmability at the time it was released, and so it's appeared on many records. But here, it is the angriest drum machine on earth. I'm using the free Citala drum machine, and I've loaded up the samples from the HR16. And if I play through the sounds I'm using, it sounds like this. Now, I'm not using all of these sounds. I am mostly using the kick and the snare, as well as the hats, and I have four versions of the hats here. There's only one crash cymbal. There's one ride cymbal, which is rarely, if ever, used. The important part is this gated snare, and I'm pretty certain this is the same sample they used on the record because I listened to it for quite a long time and all the others don't really match up. However, there are some songs where they use other snares. And this punch snare is a possible candidate for that. I think this gated snare is the main snare on the album. A couple hours actually listening to the record and trying these out on my keyboard and trying to figure them out. And this is as close as I can get. And I think it's pretty accurate. It definitely sounds like the drums, though. Who knows what all is going on behind the scenes when it comes to all the production elements. After that, I have it running through this supercharger, which is a free compressor. And then I have it running through a little EQ where I'm mostly trimming off some of the top end. I have a little bit of extra reverb on it, which again, I think is accurate to the album. For this one, I picked this short room and I cut out a lot of the high end on the reverb. It's not mixed in all that much. I also have the sketch cassette too on the drums just to make it a little more lo-fi and mess them up some, because this album was not recorded in uh, the most perfect recording environment. Here are my isolated drums.
it's important to write parts that sound like this album. It has a very particular drum style, and it's not really realistic to how people play. It's very much uh, a programmed sound. I should also note that I max out all the velocities because that's a drum machine for you. We know a few things about the guitar sound from guitarist Justin Broderick himself. For one, he specifies the EQ he used on his HM2. It's a rather unusual setup, but that's exactly as he described it. Um, of course, this is my Waza HM2 I'm using in the standard mode. I have the distortion maxed out. He says he runs into a JCM 800 and an old Marshall cab. I used this Amplitube JCM 800, which comes with the free version of Amplitube, and that's going into the matching stock cab. How close this is to the original? I don't exactly know, but uh, it sounds it sounds close enough. It's in the ballpark. He also said he uses a boss delay with a very short delay. He uses it for stereo widening, so I assume it's gotta be a stereo delay, right? Uh, it uses a, a delay, he said, almost set up like a reverb with a very short delay that is very wet. So that's what I did here. And using re-delay, I have two different taps going on on this tap delay, and they're both set slightly different and panned to opposite sides. And then the wet and dry signals are matched. So it's very wet. Uh, after that, I have it going into an extra instance of reverb with um, this free Echo Thief Impulse Response Library drainage tunnel, because I thought that sounded brutal. Just thought it needed some extra reverb. Then I have that going through another little EQ. He also says he uses metal picks. I don't have any, but I'm using this very thick one and a half millimeter sharp Tortex. It's about the thickest pick I have, and it's a little ridiculous. I don't normally use it, but I'm trying to be accurate and historical here. Now, I only recorded one take of the guitar but I wanted a little bit of extra stereo width, so I just duplicated it, panned them on opposite sides, and um, moved this a little bit to create a delay. It's a decent trick if you only have one take, and I'm not sure if he recorded uh, double tracked on this album or not, and I have no idea. Um, I also have the guitars panned a little unusually here, and I have the main one 80% left and the doubled track 45% right. And then the bass 30% right because I wanted to. And because I thought it gave it a different vibe. We're all about the vibes here. Here are the isolated guitars. <laughs> For my bass, I am using Duality from Audio Assault because I like it. Justin also mentioned that the bass player Ben uses Laney cabs and amps in the studio and uh, Trace Elliott live. I have the drive off because I'm already running it straight through an HM2 on the way in. I set the bass HM2 tone up something like this. He said it is not a fizzy tone, but you can definitely hear some distortion on the bass. So I did use a, um, a bit of grit and uh, just sort of tried to match some of the grindy grunt of the bass. Um, I do have Trace Elliott cabs in this plugin, so I used those, even though they're not used on the studio. Ben sets up his EQ uh, all whacked out, like he said, a lot of upper mids and a lot of bass. So I put in some extra bass and high mids on this, and then I even threw another EQ on, cranking up a lot more around 750. Uh, for one, this graphic EQ doesn't have a 750 band, but also it just, it provided more weight and size to the bass in the mix. Here is the isolated bass. <laughs> La 
lastly, I have these vocals here. Mostly I was just uh, goofing around, <laughs> but I really like the all the delay in there. So I have a, a noise gate. I have this supercharger again, providing some vocal compression and that's being hit pretty hard. And I have some EQ cutting off some of the highs. I have the barrier, which is a sort of distressor plugin, which they just put out a uh, version two. This is a free plugin as well. And you can switch the color. So I made it black, though I suppose red would be appropriate for this too. It does not change the sound. I have all the vocals being sent over to this auxiliary delay and reverb bus where I have re-delay um, with a half note and a quarter note delay um, for that strong vocal delay sound. And that's going through another impulse response here for another big cavernous space for some reverb. And then that's being compressed. And then there's a little bit of panning for the shouty kind of vocals I do in there just for fun. And here are how the vocals sound. Bye. Sweeper. Unengaging G -Y. I'm in no ways able to really impersonate Justin's voice on this. It does have some really cool vocals. Mine are just silly and for demonstration, but hey, that's what we do here. That is my little production. I think it's pretty close. This is something that I've wanted to do for years, actually, and I've, I've tried at least once, maybe twice before to try to get the the sound of this album because it's just, it's unique and it's got this cool drum machine, but um, it was not possible because I didn't think to look up what the drum machine was and find samples for it. Well, silly me, you can go download these samples for free. Make your own street cleaner. It's that simple. So if you're into that kind of thing, good luck. And uh, I wish you the best. And, uh, you know, be the next hit industrial metal act. That would be cool. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you Sunglasses!